Welcome everyone, this is chapter 8, part 2. In this part, we will talk about cost-benefit analysis and we're going to learn about how to measure the cost of a public project. Let us get started. Okay, so let's say we are renovating a highway. It is in very bad shape. It has a lot of potholes, crumbling shoulders, and traffic slows down. There are lots of accidents happening and... And most of the time it poses accident risk. Should you repair the road, right? You have to consider costs and benefits of it. So here is a table where it shows you costs and benefit analysis of highway construction project. So under the cost, you have asphalt, labor, and maintenance. You will see price or value, quantity, and you have total column. We have first year cost. We all save total cost over time. What does it mean? That means that cost seeps into the future. It does. Okay. And in this part, we are focusing on the cost, the top part of this table. However, we'll also talk about the benefits, driving time saved, which is 500,000 hours, life saved. That's amazing, five lives. And we are going to take a look at first year benefit and total benefit over time. Then we are going to do benefit minus cost over time. But that's going to be with the next part. Let's get started with the cost of the project. So the project requires several inputs, materials, labors, and maintenance over time. It produces two main benefits, reduced commuting time and fewer fatalities. So let's talk about measuring current costs. So if you look at the cash flow of accounting, this is the accounting method that calculates costs solely only by adding up what the government pays for inputs to a project and benefits only by adding up income or government revenues generated by the project. Okay, social marginal cost is not equal to the cash cost. Social marginal cost entails the opportunity cost of a project. What is the opportunity cost? Opportunity cost, as you learned in principles classes before, the value of an input in its next best use. It's not necessarily its cash cost, but what would we do? What would the society do with the input? Okay, we are looking at that one. For the asphalt, opportunity cost is equal to the market cash cost, so there's no problem with that, right? For the asphalt, the next best use is to sell the bag to someone else. And that's the market value. The value of the alternative use is the market price. So for asphalt, you do have cash cost equaling to the opportunity cost. Okay. So what's the opportunity cost of labor? This is a little interesting. Okay. So the market wage rate, let's say, is $10 per hour for all other workers. Suppose that the minimum wage of construction workers who will work in the highway construction is $20 per hour. But everybody else, all other workers get paid $10. So labor payments will be opportunity to cost of the resource $10 and the transfer rents. This is $10 extra to the construction workers. So what do you mean, Dr. G? So this is how it works. You are paying $20, right? But the $10 is when you take these workers from their best alternative market option, $10, plus transfers of rent. So that's the extra $10 they receive about this $10 that goes to the worker for working on the construction project. If this wasn't $20, let's say market wage rate was... $17. I'm going to give you a different example. And I am starting a public project. We have the Harbor Bridge in Corpus that's being built, actually. I actually met a couple of people who work on the construction project as construction people, workers. So let's say overall wage rate is $17. They would be getting paid outside options. But Harbor Bridge project pays them, let's say, 40 bucks. So this would be opportunity cost of resource would be $17 and this difference $23 would be transfers of rents to workers. Okay, so what are rents? So that $23 or this 10 to 20, that $10, 
payments to resource deliverers, workers in this case, that exceed those necessary to employ the resource. We do not count the rent transfers in economic costs. So if I'm paying $40 for these workers, but their outside option is 17, we count this $17, not rent transfers to workers. So the opportunity cost of this project we're talking about is the next best alternative for the construction workers who join the project, which is $10 they could have earned elsewhere. Or if th these are the numbers, it would be $17 they could have earned elsewhere. Okay, so what if, let me ask you a question. What if their outside option was $40 market wage and I'm actually paying them $40 too? Then you would count there's zero transfer dollars. So you would then count that $40 of outside market wage. Do you understand? Because some Harbor Bridge workers I met, they have been to all over the world. One of them came from Samoa. The other one family came from Outer Banks in North Carolina, I believe. And then Carolina somewhere. So, or South Carolina. Uh, so they are actually, we're getting paid almost the same. So then we count the opportunity cost of labor is exactly what they're getting paid. But in this case, please keep this in mind. If their outside option is $10, we're paying them $20. We are only counting their outside option. All right. So $10 times 1 million hours, $10 million will be the labor cost. So of the $20 million actually paid, $10 million is the transfer of rents from government to workers, and it's not counted as a true economic cost of the project, okay? So this approach lowers the economic cost of the project, but not the accounting cost. Accounting cost is still going to be $20 million. It's not a cost to society. This is transferring from government to construction workers, uh, and only cost is counted is a part diverted from other jobs, $10 is that part okay so let's say if again another example let's say a construction worker is making 70 bucks per hour you're paying them seven to two seventy two dollars right so this difference is two dollars we are going to count the seventy dollars their best alternative use okay so for asphalt, it's really easy. The next best use, besides using it on the project, is to sell it to someone else. That's the market price, $100, okay? We're going to use 1 million bags, $100 per bags, 100 times 1 million, $100 million. Labor, we need 1 million hours of workers at $10 per hour because we're counting their best alternative use. $10 million is here. Let's talk about maintenance but before that if the labor market is competitive the market wage rate for construction workers would completely determine the price which is this one for workers paying twenty dollars an hour consists of ten dollars opportunity cost their outside opportunity and ten dollar transfer payments okay so the accounting cost equals though right twenty dollars per hour paid to labor times 1 million hours 20 million the economic cost i'm going to highlight this economic cost equals 10 dollars per hour 1 million hours for a total of 10 million dollars okay so let's talk about maintenance and that's going to be future maintenance as well so this is a technical slide measuring future cost the asphalt and labor, these are immediate and one immediate and one time costs only. Okay. Maintenance, let's assume first year there's you know no maintenance costs. Actually, there could be maintenance costs first year if the road is not down well. But let's talk about this example. Maintenance will be $10 million per year forever. We are given this, right? This strip of road will require $10 million maintenance costs forever. We need to calculate this present discounted value of this flow of costs. How do we compute this? Okay, so you have present discounted value 
If you don't know present discounted value, you can watch a couple of videos online. I will post down and comment on this video if you want me to post that video and send you the link. So let's say maintenance cost is C dollars starts tomorrow, right? One plus divide by one plus R. This is the discount rate. Plus this is the first year, year zero we build the road. First year, you need this maintenance cost of $10 million. C is the cost. And you need to discount it to the first uh, period zero. I mean, I call the initial period as zero. Second year, you are discounting, again, the cost of maintenance to year zero, the initial year. I shouldn't say first because it refers to this one. So on and so forth. So you can show this as T from 1 to infinity sigma means add these items inside, right? C, 1 plus R starts from 1, T starts from 1 plus C divided by 1 plus R raised to the power 2 plus C divided by 1 plus R raised to the power 3 goes to the infinity. So you can convert this infinite sum into something manageable. You can multiply this by 1 plus r. I'm just showing you actually a very simple way to calculate an infinite sum into something super easy. Multiply everything by 1 plus r, left and right side at the same time. It becomes 1 plus r, right? 1 plus r times pdv equals... You multiply everything on this right hand side with 1 plus r and 1 plus r will, uh, which I call spread over the parentheses, it's going to multiply with each item. So c over 1 plus r times 1 plus r will be c by itself. Next item will become c divided by 1 plus r raised to the power 2 times 1 plus r. These, there are two of 1 plus r's at the bottom. 1 um plus 1 plus r in the numerator. This bottom one will become only 1 plus r. 1 will cancel out with this one. So on and so forth. So what you see here is I have c and I have the same series. This guy is the same as my pd present discounted value okay so this whole thing that i put in the infinite series was recreated again so what do we have we have i'm going to do the calculation one plus r present discounted value left hand side equals c plus present discounted value interesting look at this so I have present discounted value, distribute this multiplication over the contents of the parentheses. You have present discounted value, whatever that value is, plus RPDV, PDV, another C plus PDV, okay? So this cancels with this one. As a result, to calculate an infinite series of present discounted value that you've seen here, something that looks like this, it's going to be C divided by R. So it's great, actually. It's so manageable. So let's say I'm giving you $100. I'm giving you $1,000 forever. Okay. And starting from tomorrow... And the interest rate is, let's say, 2%. Discount rate is 2%. What's the present discounted value of this series? And that is easy to find. 1,000 divided by 0 0.02. So I'm going to use my cell phone, which I tell you not to do it. 1,000 divided by 0 0.02. $50,000. Okay, so this is how you find the present discounted value of an infinite series. So remember those lottery scratch-offs that gives you $1,000 per week? It says forever, but it's for 
it's for 20 weeks. Let's say it was actually for forever. The present discounted value of it is about $50,000. All right. So this is how you find the present discount value of an infinite series. Why do we need this? Because we have a maintenance cost of $10 million per year forever. So the key question is, what is R then? This is the social discount rate. For private firms, it's the opportunity cost of what else the firm could do with the same funds. So this is the after-tax rate of return for the company. Government, though, counts both after-tax portion of the return and the taxes collected. In practice, lots of different discount rates are used. But Office of Management and Budget as well uses, recommends us to use 7% for government projects. So 7% discount rate, right? So $10 million divided by 7%. I'm going to again use my calculator, aka phone. $10 million divided by 0 0.07. Okay, it is almost 143 million dollars it's 142.8 143 we are rolling it up this is the project right so first year cost will be 100 million dollar on asphalt 10 million dollar on labor you built it that's the immediate cost total cost for the project is not equal to this because total cost includes perpetual maintenance cost of 143 million dollars 110 plus 143, 253 million will be the cost of this project over its lifetime. So at the end of last video, I was talking about would the asphalt, right? I asked you several questions. Would the asphalt be counted as the cost? Yes. Labor? Yes. Maintenance? Yes. How about the noise? Even though noise is annoying, we don't count it, count it as a cost of a project. Okay, so it's a little bit hard to quantify or ruined views, you know, it's hard to quantify. Okay, folks, as we said, Office of Management and Budget suggests 7% discount rate. We talked about that. So this is, this is the table without any animation so when you're looking at this slide at home you can watch this you can pause this slide we calculate everything okay learning by doing exercise a new public works project requires 500,000 hours of labor to compete complete perfect the labor market is perfectly competitive the market wage rate is $20 you're gonna grab this one but the wage paid to workers is $25. I don't care. Market wage pay rate is the one you want to count. 25 includes market wage rate and the transfers made to the workers. So $20 is the opportunity cost. The $5 is the transfers, rent transfers to work. What's the opportunity cost of labor? 20 times 500,000. Okay. So it's going to be, I believe, $10 million. Am I correct? So I basically grabbed this two multiplied by 500,000, 1 million times one more zero, $10 million. That's the correct answer. Can you tell me what are the transfers, rental transfers to workers? I want you to calculate rental transfers and how many hours of labor you used and comment it under this video in the comments and i will do a shout out for you if you get it right in the next video all right so in the next part we're attacking the measuring the current benefits of public projects this is an exciting part we're getting so close to putting them all together i'll see you in part three guys bye